Slog FPV. This is the DJI Digital FPV system. So you might ask, why did someone who flies a lot of micro FPV drones buy the system? Well, you have to have some background. Uh, before I got into FPV, I was actually a videography pilot. And before that, I built DIY quads because at the time, that was the cheapest way to get into uh, quads and the technology. Um, over here, um, this is my first quad uh, based off of the APM 2.5 that, uh, that is running um, Arden Pilot uh, that uh, I built about six years ago. And yes, this monstrosity does fly. So, so going back to the DJI Digital Air System and why I purchased it. When I got into FPV two years ago, um, I had just bought the DJI goggles. I, I really like them for framing shots with my Mavic, but I also like the immersive feeling I got uh, viewing my surroundings in 1080p. So that's what got me investigating, you know, FPV technology and what FPV pilots were flying at the time two years ago. And that's when I actually made the switch over to FPV. Yeah, I still fly videography drones, but um, I fly FPV um, drones way more. So now, two years later, uh, DJI has come out with a system that looks like a technology um, that gets us FPV pilots closer to the reality of digital FPV. You know, I know there's still some gaps here. It's pretty, still pretty large. It's not gonna fit on a micro drone. But, um, you know, I went ahead and took the plunge, you know, with the understanding that, you know, DJI could pull the plug on this because of low cells or their knack for coming out with newer tech that is not backward compatible. So I, I broke this up uh, into two videos two parts. The first part is, is this technology suitable for five inch build using a popular frame? In this case, um, I use the Armor 10 Marmut. I see a lot of six inch and seven inch builds, but only a few uh, five inch builds out there. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you a condensed build video on how I did it with very few modifications to the frame. Yell racing lead wire glued on with E6000 glue. Hypertrain V2-2306-2450 KV motors with Brain 3D arm bumpers. This is the Tecto 32-bit Sports D-Shot 1200 and it's 35 amp continuous up to 6S. I'll be running 4S on this system. This is how I modified the rear standoffs so that I could support the FPV air unit. You can see that I had to cut these out and that provided enough room for the antennas to come out the sides here. So the next thing I wanna show you is how I installed the camera. I used the top two uh, slotted holes here. I used some TPU. I'll, you know, I just printed some out as a um, spacer here you could uh, if you don't want to do that um, you can use some plastic washers i wouldn't recommend metal because uh, you're going to be adjusting this so um, you can uh, just use your i uh, just you could use some m3 or m2 plastic washers um, as spacers as well uh, you want to make sure that this bracket is tilted as far forward as you can and that the camera is moved as far forward as you can get it I mean, you want it to still be protected. As you can see that um, I'm not hitting the, the camera lens here, but it's far enough out so that uh, you don't get the frame in the uh, shots. So um, that's what I did. So here you can see that I have the FPV air unit installed with the wiring harness. This is a Kekute F7 flight controller that I'm using. I actually have it in uh, rotated um, to give me room. So um, normally this is the front and this is the back, but I'll go ahead and fix that in beta flight. But let's start here where the black wire is gonna go to your VBAT ground. The red wire, which is uh, the power for the air unit, is gonna go to the VBAT pad, VCC. 
And then I went ahead and connected the OSD to UART1, which would be the RX coming off the, or I should say going into the flight controller, is connected um, to the gray wire. And the gray wire is the TX on the um, air unit. And then next to that is the um, TX pad of the flight co controller, which is connected to the white wire. And that white wire is the input or RX going into the air unit. And then um, for S bus, I used UART6, which is uh, typically what I use on the Kekute F7 uh, flight controller. And then you're also going to need a signal ground, which is this uh, last pad here next to the next to the standoff. And uh, that's how I put everything together. And I just used the standoffs that came with a uh, Kakute. Um, I bought the uh, ESC and the flight controller as one unit. It was cheaper that way. The next thing I wanted to talk about is the antenna placement. I'll see how well um, this works out. I just went ahead and routed it, um, the antennas down here at the bottom, um, just to protect them a little more. I have some really thick, thick pads at the bottom, as you can see on the arms. So um, on a on a crash, when it flips over on its back, um, this gives you a little more protection, but it's uh, not uh, probably the best for reception. But I'll go ahead and uh, try this out and see what kind of reception I get. So I'm getting really close to finishing up this build. Uh, one thing I added was the V-Fly Finder 2. Went ahead and connected it up. Um, the two um, black wire goes to ground. Then the white wire is, uh, or yellow wire is negative buzz. And then the red wire is five volts. The other thing I added was a RDQ micro M8N GPS module here and I went, used, uh, went ahead and used um, the uh, UART4 so you can see I have the white wire which is um, going to the RX pad on the flight controller and that is connected to the GPS TX and then um, on the uh, green wire is connected to the um, TX pad on the flight controller and then that goes to the RX of the GPS and then uh, one thing you want to make sure that you do is you know put signal ground on which is the black wire and the red needs to go to 3.3 volts not 5 volts you'll burn out the GPS so 3.3 volts is red and then uh, the ground signal ground here so with that i'm going to go ahead and uh, button this up and i'm going to configure things next all right here's the completed build so now i'm going to go into beta flight and configure things all right this is not a complete how to set up a quad from scratch uh, this is just the changes i made in the beta flight configurator uh, for uh, specific changes for the DJI um, digital FPV system. So on the setup tab, um, I am running a GPS. And if you're interested in how to set up a GPS, I'll, I'll put a link below to Joshua Bar Bardwell has a pretty good uh, uh, tutorial on how to do that. Um, but if you're gonna be using GPS rescue, definitely wanna calibrate the accelerometer. Uh, I went with a, a GPS rescue system just because this is new technology and um, I wanted to be able to, you know, flip the switch if I got into trouble and return home. The only downfall with the DJI system is not all the telemetry information for GPS rescue is available in your goggles, but um, that's not a big deal um, once it gets within, uh, you know, visual line of sight then you can take control of it and, and land it in a pinch so um, yeah I think it, for me it was worthwhile as far as the uh, ports tab um, I'm using UART1 for the OSD so this is turned on the MSP here 
And then as far as, uh, it's pretty simple, uh, as far as S-Bus, um, serial for the receiver, um, you just have to turn on Serial RX. And of course, uh, I was using UART4 as my, my GPS UART that I'm using. So then uh, moving on to um, the receiver tab, it comes mapped AETR1234. You can change that in the goggles. Also, I would recommend that you change the, um, you know, you need to change the endpoints. Um, you need to calibrate the, the receiver, or I should say the remote controller, the transmitter. Um, there's a menu in the, the goggles where you'll go through and calibrate the RC transmitter. And um, then you can set up the endpoints through your goggles. There is a, uh, a transmitter RC um, menu in there that uh, you can go ahead and, and set all that up. So uh, we'll go over the, the modes right now. So, um, you know, aux one, which is this switch. Let me see if I can get it in there so you can see it. I have this set up as my arming switch. This is my mode switch, switch from angle, horizon, and um, acro air. And I do have air mode turned on all the time. And then um, this right here is my uh, beeper and flip over on a crash um, switch. So, um, and then my GPS rescue is um, this four switch, which is aux four. So it's pretty simple. Uh, this is aux one. This switch is aux two. This three position switch is aux three. And then this switch, um, three position switch is aux four. So these are all um, three position switches. So you can do quite a bit with those. Um, and you can see that here. Um, it's pretty simple. Arm aux one, angle horizon aux two, um, have GPS rescue aux four, uh, beeper aux three and uh, aux three is flip over on crash so uh, pretty straightforward to set up so that is about it um, there's not a whole lot to it so with that i'm going to go ahead and uh, take it out on a uh will get a weight which i'll show you here and uh, then i'll uh, take it out for a maiden flight hopefully everything goes well uh, also i forgot to mention you really want to um, put this thing in uh, 25 milliwatt mode when you're on the bench and I would even recommend uh, turning on a fan when you're doing that. Another thing uh, and I'm going to probably remind you um, the viewers multiple times one thing I don't like about this headset is this uh, jack um, tends to just get dislodged pretty easily so in my mind, that's pretty dangerous. Um, so I would recommend that you tie wrap it to the um, head strap um, bar here, and then that keeps it in position. Because if you're flying and this uh, comes um, connector comes unplugged, it does come unplugged pretty easily. And because you have your battery in your pocket, um, you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna have a bad day. So. Um, definitely tie wrap that so it holds it into place because it comes out pretty easily. So one last thing on the configuration tab, uh, because I rotated the flight controller 180 degrees, you're going to have to um, change the yaw degrees to 180 to take into account that the uh, flight controllers uh, turned 180 degrees. So let's go ahead and get a dry weight of my build. So it's 421 grams. If I add a session mount, we're at 445 grams. As compared to a similar build, this is a Chameleon TI build that I have. It's uh, 446, so they come in really equivalent. 
So even though you have the air unit in this, it really is, uh, you know, very comparable as far as a build weight. And uh, even if you want to run a session with it, I think it's it's a reasonable weight to do that. Yeah, granted, the the marmot uh, frame is uh, marmot frame is uh, lighter, but not that much lighter as compared to the Chameleon Ti. So uh, overall, I think that it's a very reasonable build to have the FPV air unit installed in a five inch quad. So this concludes part one, which is the build and configuration part of my review of the DJI digital FPV system. In the second video, um, it's gonna be my maiden flight and uh, my thoughts on um, how well this system works with a uh, five inch freestyle build. So with that, thanks uh, for watching and uh, tuning into my channel.